Hey everybody, welcome to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy. I'm Ken Tamplin and I want to discuss a really serious subject with you guys and that subject is autoimmune disease, particularly chronic fatigue, uh, Lyme's disease, fibromyalgia, Epstein-Barr and Hajimoto's and a host of other autoimmune dysfunction. Um, now first of all, what gives me the right to even discuss this with you guys would be the first question and I want to answer that. Uh, and the second thing is, is that we see in um, Western medicine particularly that these are diseases that are not curable and I'm going to discuss that again also in a minute. So what gives me the right to talk about this? Well, I have a daughter who is a stunning, beautiful young woman. She's 26 now, um, happily married with a gorgeous son who's going to be five here in July of next year um, and also pregnant. Uh, but I want to discuss what's happened to my daughter, where she is currently, and the things that we've learned. So what gives me the right to talk about this is number one, I am not a healthcare professional. Please see your qualified, certified healthcare professional, uh, number one. Number two, everyone's on a different journey and at a different level. So if you have chronic fatigue or any one of these chronic illnesses or disorders, um, everyone is at a different stage. So one thing may or may not apply to you, but I think where I'm going with this will benefit everyone. Now, my intention here and my goal is not to sell a product. It's not to convince you of anything. And in fact, it's really annoying when I hear people refer to chronic fatigue as the disease disease where you just don't feel like going into work the next morning. It's actually incredibly debilitating and we're going to discuss more of this again in a second. But you know, first of all, I want to talk about what chronic fatigue is and um, I want to talk a little bit about my daughter. So I'm going to start with my daughter first. Now my daughter uh, is an extraordinary individual and she is a type A personality and most of these chronic diseases strike type A personalities. Uh, they also um, seem to manifest themselves pretty predominantly in young women, which is really interesting. So uh, I want to put that over here. So if you're a young woman and you are, are suffering from this, I really think this is going to help you. Not that it doesn't branch out into men as well, but it, it, it dominates uh, women. So my daughter, uh, you know, in her younger years, she loved gymnastics and she uh, went on to be a level five gymnast really early on uh, as a kid, young, young kid. I think ages 11, 12, something like that. Um, she was a fantastic swimmer. Her form was flawless. And yes, I'm a man of means and I was able to get both of our kids um, extraordinary, um, not just medical attention, which we're going to also talk about, but also, you know, help them along the way with coaches and things like that. So, um, so she was an extraordinary swimmer. Um, she went on to be the surfing champion of her school at Newport Harbor High School in um, beautiful, sunny Southern California. Uh, she also went on to be a professional salsa instructor and so she you know has several languages that she's mastered in fact she graduated um, with a degree in Spanish and uh, just straight-a student uh, extraordinary individual uh, outdoorsy sportsy kind of girl well she went from all of these amazing physical attributes to oftentimes barely able to get out of bed you heard me right from all these awards and all of these amazing physical things she was able to do to literally barely being able to get out of bed. Now I want to post a couple quick pictures here. This is a picture back around the high school era when she won her surfing championship. Uh, they're lifting her up here on a surfboard, which is awesome. Um, here's another photo of her uh, actually in a competition or somewhere around a competition uh, as a professional salsa instructor. So you can put a name with the face. So I'm not just you know talking about someone, bragging about someone. My daughter's just a lovely human being. She also has uh, mentored young uh, men and women in a program called Young Life and has done that for years and has really reached back out to the community. Uh, but I really want to emphasize this AAA personality type. Early on, she was a great guitar player. I mean, great. In fact, um, I'll post a link of her playing. I've only let two girls, not that I'm a chauvinist or, you know, whatever, but I've only actually had two girls that have played on any of my recordings in the history. I have 40 record out, 4-0, and she played on Hazy Shade of Winter. You can check that out. I'll put, I'm going to put a lot of links in the description. She'll I'll put, I'll put that she played all the instruments except for bass and drums on that, including keyboards, all the background vocals. I mean, just a phenomenally talented young lady. Like I said, and she went from all of this to literally 
almost not even being able to get out of bed or get make it to the car, specifically not drive or hardly walk down to the park with her son. And we've been on about a seven and a half to eight year journey and a path towards her health. And I've spared no expense, and I mean no expense. In fact, here's what I mean by no expense. Our family's probably spent around 200,000 US dollars uh, on trying to identify the condition and how to treat it. And we've been told that it is not treatable. And we found out that that's just simply not true. Uh, I'm gonna get into that again in a minute. But so let's talk about CFS because again, these are all kind of in the same family. But chronic fatigue syndrome um, has symptoms of, you know, just feeling crappy and tired all the time. You don't feel like getting out of bed. In fact, one of the um, videos that we'd seen about people with chronic fatigue, some of them lay in bed for 20, 21, 22 hours a day. Day, can't even get out of bed. We actually met those people uh, in person and we went out of our way to meet them in person and we found a specific person that I'm gonna do in a part two series of this who is very instrumental or maybe the only instrument uh, onto the path of their healing. Now, I, like I said, I wanna emphasize this one more time. I'm not here to sell you a product. I'm not even here necessarily to recommend products other than share life experience of things that have worked for us. I know some things may not be extreme for some that may have CFS or fibromyalgia or Epstein-Barr or whatever, um, and some may be very extreme and you can really benefit. My only intention and goal here is that I have my finger on the pulse of tens of thousands thousands of singers, and I'm gonna relate this to singing because um, singing is a sport and it requires a lot of energy and strength, and if you have CFS or if you have an autoimmune disorder, um, it's very, very difficult to garner up and muster up that kind of strength for good quality singing. So I'm hoping that this will just truly bless you and benefit you from our life's experiences and what we found to be true, uh, not true, and some things in between, okay? So again, chronic fatigue, what is it? Well. Like I said, extreme fatigue. I mean, you're just tired all day long. Uh, sleeplessness is uh, definitely a byproduct of chronic fatigue. Uh, loss of memory or concentration, you know, kind of walking around in a fog all the time. Uh, sore throats, constant, you know, repeating sore throats. Uh, enlarged lymph glands in your neck, in your armpits, you know, around the body. Um, unexplained muscle cramps and aches and joints, and particularly in the legs. Uh, that's another interesting one. Uh, headaches, you know. Uh, un refreshed sleep. It doesn't matter how long you sleep, it just seems like you can't get enough sleep and it just doesn't refresh you. Uh, extreme continuous exhaustion. You're just <gasps> exhausted. You can hardly get to you know the refrigerator and back where you just don't feel like poopy, crappy, tired. Um, you know, like I said, repeating colds and flu or colds and flu symptoms, whether they actually manifest or get full-blown colds or flu, you kind of feel like you're kind of always walking around with a flu. Um, Post-nasal drip and sinus, chronic sinus issues and pain or chronic sinusitis. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but what all this amounts to, and I'm gonna boil this whole thing down into one category, and that is, living in a constant state of fight or flight. Now I'm gonna to touch on some subjects. Some of you guys may agree with it. Some of you may not agree with it. Please don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If there's something I say that you say, ah, okay, that, I don't believe that, and so I'm gonna throw it all out. Please understand, this is uh, a very skeptical person myself, a very analytical person myself, a very show me, uh, you know, like I said, the proof is in the singing is the slogan here at my singing academy. You know, the proof is in the healing, prove it to me. I wanna see people that have been healed. I don't wanna see, you know, go on someone's website with testimonials and this, that. I wanna meet these guys in person. I wanna know how they got healed. I wanna know who gave them the information. When in fact, we have done this, and I'm gonna cover this in our my part two series series of this, but there's gonna be a lot of information so we can only digest as much as you know we can handle. I love that old uh, saying, uh, the mind can only endure as much as the butt or the seat can handle. So bear with me as you go through this. I promise it will be well worth it for you guys out there that are suffering from this. So anyway, I'm living in a constant fight or flight state. Well, you know, as life gets more complicated, and as life you know, goes faster and faster and information is coming at us faster and faster and we're expected to keep up, we're constantly living in this hurried state or fight or flight and reacting, reacting to this. Um, I have a kind of a cute story for you. I remember when my son was probably around four years old 
And we used to live in a place called Newport Beach, California. And we had this uh, really pretty house on a you know cul-de-sac, and everything looked happy, clappy, and birds chirping, and you know whatever little you know uh, p- pictures sort of of like my blue heaven, right? And um, we jumped in the car, and he said, "Come on, hurry, get in the car, Robert, hurry, you know, blah blah blah. Come on, hurry, let's go, you know." And my son said something so prolific to me. He said, "Daddy, are we in a hurry?" And I thought to myself. No, we're just going to the park. You know, why do I have to hurry them to get in their car seat? Hurry them to put their seatbelt on. Hurry them to get out of the car. Once we're at the park, we play for an hour or two. Hurry, let's get back into the car. For what? Why are we living in a constant state of hurry? Why are we living in a constant state? I gotta get this done, I gotta get that done, I done, oh, you know. And all of this plays severely into this chronic fatigue or these um, autoimmune dysfunctions and disorders and disease. Okay, so let me repeat this one more time. We are living in a constant state of fight or flight. And in other words, we're living in a constant state of living on adrenaline and fight or flight. Now I want to talk about the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, okay? The sympathetic nervous system, let me just read this here because like I said, I made some notes. Um, The sympathetic is responsible for the response commonly referred to as fight or flight, while the parasympathetic is referred to as rest and digest, okay? So sympathetic, fight or flight, parasympathetic, rest, and digest. And we're going to talk a lot about parasympathetic, or or at least what we talk about will be directly related to parasympathetic. The parasympathetic nervous system is the part of the autonomic nervous system that controls functions of the body at rest. Let me read that one more time. The parasympathetic nervous system is the part of the autonomic uh, nervous system that controls functions of the body at rest. Now we gotta kinda really think about that. So we got parasympathetic and sympathetic. Parasympathetic controls body functions at rest. Sympathetic is the fight or flight, okay? So put those two thoughts in your, kinda like bubbles in your head when you think about this. So now what's happening is, is this constant breaking down of the immune system that is causing this constant state of fight or flight that puts your body in jeopardy of being susceptible to a chronic illness, okay? Particularly chronic fatigue is what we're referring to right now. Now, and by the way, this I'm, I believe that this is all the way to Alzheimer's, though I know there's aluminum and metals that play a role in that. I believe that this could be just, you know, uh, manifest itself in a lot of different chronic illness. But so anyway, um, so we live in a, 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 this constant state of breaking down our immune system. And what does that? Well, there's a lot of things that do this, folks. But I'm going to break down some major ones that we've tested and we know to be true and that we've countermanded with different things that have really helped us, okay? Now, let's remember, we're talking about diseases that Western medicine say are incurable, okay? Now, I'm not a doctor. See your health primary healthcare physician or your healthcare practitioner, uh, but I'm going to tell you that I have consulted and paid for a lot of medical advice and have consulted at the highest levels of some of the biggest doctors in the world over these specific subjects to try to get some answers for healing, okay? Now, um, constant exposure to Wi-Fi, and cell phones. Now also Wi-Fi towers uh, and your your cell uh, phone, uh, constant use of cell phone. Now, I wanna talk about cell phones for a second because this is very important. I have a, a pretty good friend, um, pretty good meaning that I wish we got to know each other better, uh, but we actually served together in a church um, I was in in Hawaii, uh, and she was a wonderful lady, uh, used her phone a lot, didn't even hold it to her ear. She actually used headphone headsets a lot, uh, and she uh, died of brain damage, of brain cancer, excuse me, uh, from over cell phone use. Now, it's interesting, we don't see this uh, in the news and it's not talked about on AT&T and all these, you know, iPhone doesn't really come out. Though if you read the iPhone, the iPhone actually says, hold it away two to three inches, I think, from your head when you're talking, no one does that. You know, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? People are like stuffing it as close to their heads as they can. But anyway, so she she contracted brain cancer and it's actually in the doctor's notes that uh, very specifically, it was overuse or the use of cell phones that caused it. So for those of you out there that think, ah, that's baloney, cell phone use doesn't cause brain cancer or any 
many kinds of cancers or uh, nervous system disorders. Um, I have personal experience that that's just patently false. That's not true. Um, they do, and uh, they're very, very uh, effective at, at rattling the nervous system and all, way, all the way to the extent of causing cancers. So with that said, so we have we have um, cell phone and we have Wi-Fi now. Uh, I don't get it. I'm going to talk about how to deal with those in a minute, but we also have GMOs, genetically modified organisms. Now, these are foods that either are hard or impossible for the body to digest. And I know there's a big movement against GMOs all over the world. So for you out there that want to do your research, please research these subjects and don't just say yes or no. Do your own research on this. Don't just go to Snopes and think your research is complete. I mean, really do your research on this and see what I'm saying to be true, okay? Next thing is um, glyphosates, right? Uh, pesticides that are sprayed and dust cropped uh, or sprayed all over our crops. Um, this is very, very alarming because it's being found in the majority of all of our foods and is very unhealthy and very carcinogenic, very cancer causing. Um, anyway, heavy atmospheric stuff. Now, this is where I'm going to lose a few people. It's okay. If what I have to say freaks you out, then what I have to say won't benefit you anyway, so please, you can, you can turn off now. But I am gonna include this in this. So I used atmospheric pollution, but I'm gonna go as far to call it chemtrails. Oh, did he say chemtrails? I'm out of here, he's crazy. Yeah, I did say chemtrails, and in fact, uh, you'll see more and more about Bill Gates talking about someday he wants to stop global warming, climate change. We're seeing this all over the world with Greta and company. Climate change, climate change, climate change change you know and uh, and their solution is to spray a bunch of crap in the air well guess what folks they've already been spraying a bunch of crap in the air for a long time wake up and smell the coffee it's been going on for a long time and respiratory illness around the world is up almost 400 percent and it's been as a result of a lot of atmospheric pollution chemtrails and a lot of other goodies that are thrown into this uh, cocktail of um, bad air okay so we'll talk maybe more about this will or not uh, heavy metals um, and other contaminants in our food and water how do we get rid of them um, so what are autoimmune triggers like what actually starts the process of getting chronic fatigue or fibromyalgia or Epstein Barr or you know whatever and there are quite a few but um, I'm just gonna touch on the main ones now we believe our daughter, it was triggered from, or possibly triggered from mono, mononucleosis. Um, so as the body is already susceptible, and again, uh, has a real low immune function, uh, and is struggling already, and a trigger hits that, then it can spiral out of control into an autoimmune disease. So mono, vaccines and there's a whole left and right issue on this oh no he's not going to talk about vaccines yes i am actually uh if you go to the cdc's website and you look at how many vaccines have been introduced to our young children uh, compared to 30 years ago or 20 years ago it will absolutely blow your mind it will blow your mind also that they admit how much mercury goes in this because the mercury itself which is is you know obviously very poisonous uh is what holds the vaccine into the body and this this actually resurfaces later in life uh, and or could cause autism and all kinds of other things. You're going to say, Ken, where's the proof in that? It's coming out more and more and more and more. So again, for you skeptics on this stuff, please just at least hit the pause button on some of the things you may disagree with, but at least give me the benefit of the doubt that I've done a lot of research. And like I said, we've spent about a couple hundred thousand dollars um, on, on medicinal um, or you know medical treatments and things over and above what's been paid for by insurance. So when I said I'm a man of means and I was gonna talk more about that, what I mean is is that we've put out the money and we've talked to people at the highest levels and I'm gonna quote some of these people. So if you have, uh, take umbrage at that or offense, uh, then you can take offense with some of these PhDs that I'm about to um, bring up here in a minute. So anyway, vaccines, flu shots, right? Well, I just saw a recent report that said uh, of uh, in the year 2019 uh, that the flu shot was woefully uh, inaccurate adequate and that at best uh, it healed or it, it uh, kept uh, 9%. So 91% of the people that got a flu shot still got the flu or even worse and it, at best it helped 9% of the population that got it. So that ought to tell you something right there. Um, viral infections uh, such as glandular fever, right? Uh, bacterial infections such as pneumonia. These are triggers, right? For CFS or you know, chronic fatigue. Uh, problems with your immune system and there's different 
you know, levels of this and what they are. Uh, a hormone imbalance can also be a trigger. Uh, again, we just discussed heavy exposure to Wi-Fi. Now we got three, four, and coming up 5G. 5G is gonna be really gnarly, folks, and you're gonna see a lot about that in the news, and there's already, already tons of communities that are banning it before it even gets you know set in motion um, we talked about heavy cell phone use mental disorders or problems um, such as stress emotional trauma and I'm going to talk about that too in a minute uh, and then they say you know your genes play a role in this as well and that could possibly be true however I'm gonna put a lot of information on the screen and also in the descriptions where you guys can click on for some of this information. Again, I'm not selling a product. I'm not endorsing people because I am I get kickbacks from anybody. It's just our own personal experience of what we found of information to be totally legit and things that have worked for us on our path towards healing, okay? And I'll, I'll talk more about that at the end of this. Um, so stay tuned for that, because it's really important. So anyway, so your genes, they say, play a role in this. Well, uh, there's a guy named Bruce Lipton, and he's gonna seem a little you know, out there, but he's really interesting. Bruce Lipton, I'm gonna put his um, URL quickly up on the screen, uh, and he has a, a book called The Biology of Belief. Now, um, whether you agree with Bruce or not, Bruce comes up with some pretty interesting things on this. So let me put this on the screen right now, biology of belief. Okay, the next person I'd like to discuss is Dr. Stephen Gundry. Uh, he has a book out that, I, he has two books out, and one we kind of living by, and one we're starting to go through right now. But um, he, by the way, is an interesting character because he has been a heart surgeon for 20, 30 years, I mean, a long time. Go to his website, I'll post his website up. But he claims, and I believe it's correct, that inflammation inflammation in the body is the number one cause of disease in the world. And it might be the number one cause of disease, it might even just be the cause of disease. Okay, inflammation, inflammation in the body. So how do we reduce inflammation? Well, he has a wonderful book um, that's called The Plant Paradox, and I strongly recommend you get it and read it, it's awesome. Uh, and he has another one called The Longevity Paradox, which we're going through right now. But just fantastic reading and what actually causes inflammation in the body and how you can get rid of it. So just a fantastic um, PhD doctor. So for you uh, uh, skeptics out there, I'm not quoting internet quacks and, you know, blogs and, you know, whatever chat room chatter. Um, I'm actually quoting PhDs that are heart surgeons of umpteen years with incredible credentials that are now espousing nutrition and other things that aren't even taught in med school. It's crazy, right? Uh, Dr. Joel Furman. Now, um, I have a video out that talks about you know what to eat for singers and so forth and I'm trying to relate this to to singing but I also my daughter who I love like crazy is so close to me who as a singer um, just doesn't even have the strength to do my vocal exercises anymore as a direct result of uh, her condition so and she's recovering uh, and it's a long road and we're gonna discuss this more in a second like I said but dr. Joel Furman eat to live now Joel Furman is another MD and uh, it's more of a strict vegan diet and they differ a little bit him and Gundry differ on some, some dietary things, but they're both excellent. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and po post his uh, Eat to Live book here. Uh, and then he has another one called Fast Food Genocide. It's a great book. Uh, go to his websites, go to all these guys' websites. Look at his TED talk. He does a TED talk um, that's awesome. And it you know gives a little bit of his background and kind of where he's coming from. It was a, actually a, um, I don't think he was an Olympic skater, but he was a semi-pro uh, or amateur uh, ice skater and uh, got hurt and had to heal himself through you know what his uh, eating what he teaches so to speak uh, dr. Joe Dispenza now Joe Dispenza is gonna be a little fringe you know uh, because he gets he's the guy that actually healed himself with his mind you heard me right he healed himself of a chronic illness with his mind. Now, the reason I'm bringing him up is I'm a Christian and I'm very careful of what I put into my mind and I'm very careful of what I let into my uh, my spirit and my psyche. So I'm not suggesting go out and you know get all of what these guys say. I mean, use your own discretion and your filters of what, what is healthy for you. But I, re I bring up Joe because it is a demonstration to the power of the mind and what's going on. Like, you know, it's the most irritating thing in the world to go to your doctor and have him say, yeah, it's all in your mind. You know, here's some antidepressants, right? And that is bogus because they just do that because they don't know what else to do. So they prescribe something to have you go away, right? But so, but I don't want that, of, you know, pushing that aside to discredit 
the power of the mind and what the mind is capable of. In fact, it's the mind that's creating this problem to begin with, right? Because everything is from the mind. The mind is the, you know, the, the captain of, um, you know, all of your, the function, bodily, bodily functions. So uh, let's remember that. So it, I bring up Joe Dispenza and I'll put his website here too. You can check it out. Uh, like I said, I'm not in any of the transcendental meditation, any of the mysticism stuff that he does, but I, it's just an example that here was a guy that was able to heal himself with his mind, okay? Um, NMT work. So neuromuscular therapy. Now, this single-handedly has been one of the things that has helped us the most. And I'm gonna to talk to you about not all NMT is created equal, not all NMT therapists are created equal, far from it. But I wanna to talk to you a little bit about one of the specific things that has helped us and a specific person that has helped us. Now, I'm not gonna discuss this person who is in Canton, Ohio. Uh, his name's Mike. He is uh, an amazing guy and has uh, led us to far more than just neuromuscular therapy, really opened our minds to a lot of things for a path of healing. But what I like most about Mike, and I'm gonna uh, do a part two series on this with Mike on camera and hopefully get to interview some of the people that have been healed through what Mike has done for us. Now, this is really important, guys, because we've flown all over the world to try to get, you know, we've, I'm gonna, in fact, I'll talk more about this in a minute. I don't wanna, spoiler alert for what I'm about to share, but but Mike has helped us tremendously and uh, I can't say enough good things about him. He's very altruistic. He's not in it for money. He's not selling. In fact, when he recommends a product, it's always through some website that he just gets a deal and hands it off to you and lets you go buy it. He's not selling supplements and so forth. Where a lot of these guys do sell supplements and you know, whatever, and that's their thing. Uh, but they're, they really are helpful. So anyway, so NMT work, let's talk about this. Now, St. John's Neuromuscular um, Therapy in Clearwater, Florida is where this guy Mike was from and he's advanced way beyond just that. So don't think that NMT is your only thing, your only go-to, but it is a, a major component in this. I've done it myself, my wife has done it, uh, my daughter's certainly done it, and we have seen tremendous results. Now let me give you what I mean by tremendous. Let me give you an, uh, a, a very blatant thing. Well, how is this measurable, Ken? How can you prove it? Well, one of the things Mike did was before we treated our daughter, or he would even accept treatment to our daughter. He said, I want you and your wife to go through this yourself first. It's like, what? Why? He goes, because the fish rots from the head on down and chances are she got this from you guys. I'm like, what are you talking about? We lived again. We lived in my blue heaven. We thought, you know, we raised a great family, good Christian home, good morals, you know, no drugs, you know, very minimal alcohol, if any. In fact, I quit drinking here about six months ago completely. Um, yeah, and, 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 and we thought we were living kind of, you know, the model life for what most Americans would live and come to find out, well, I actually weren't. Remember the story about, daddy, are we in a hurry? Yeah, so we lived this frenetic life of, you know, constantly being on 10. And as a direct result, yes, we do believe that that spillover or that was handed down uh, to our daughter and our son, by the way. Uh, he doesn't have any um, health issues at all. Um, but, you know, we see this. And like I said, I see this with my finger on the pulse. Remember, I look at Ken Temple Vocal Academy. Thank you guys. I'm coming up on 100 million views, right? Over 700,000 subscribers. I have my finger on the pulse of a lot of what's going on all over the world. And I am seeing this as pandemic. It is all over the world. So this is, and this is more of a re recent phenomena as life speeds up and as information speeds up and we're more is expected of us. This is getting increasingly uh, difficult to reconcile. So anyway, um, Mike uh, from, from Canton, Ohio. So he made us go through this and then, and then I've never seen this before, but as, as a healthcare professional wanted us to interview personally and talk to people that have recovered or in their, are in recovery at the highest level that are, you know, guys that were sleeping for 20 or 21 hours a day in bed went from that all the way to like a 90 or 95% recovery. And Mike's goal is 100% recovery. So it's not like, oh, you know, I'm gonna get at 30% and I'm gonna have to live with this for the rest of my life. No, you don't. 
You don't have to live with this for the rest of your life and it is curable. It's just that the Western world and Eastern world both have not caught up, caught up with this. Now, let me give you a little background about Mike. Mike actually had a very severe head wound um, from a motorcycle accident. Uh, was told, I think he was gonna be like half brain dead for the rest of his life or something. And through NMT work and all of these other elements that are key and critical, um, pivotal things that have helped him recover, um, he has taken that information and has shared that and is sharing it with the world. So, like I said, I'm gonna do a whole thing on Mike coming up and I hopefully we'll get to interview all the people that he had us personally in interview on the phone and in person. We've flown out to uh, Canton, Ohio, I don't know, five, six times now for treatments and meeting people and, and going through the process of this. So, um, but that's nothing compared to all the other stuff we've done. And I'm hoping too that all this information that we've paid for and this, the stuff that we've gone through will help you with CFS and you with chronic illness to know that there's hope, there is a path, it may not be easy, but it is doable, okay? So, uh, NMT work. Not all NMTs are created equal. We talked about the um, St. John Neuromuscular Therapy uh, in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, we tried, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna talk about some of the things we've tried, okay? So, humor me, guys. I know this is a long video, but hang in there. Um, cranial sacral. Shmeh. I mean, it might work for some people. I did it. We all did it. Did it a few times. 90-minute sessions. Eh, shmeh. You know, uh, and the doctors, they just want to put you on antidepressants. So let's let's recognize what Western medicine is doing here. Uh, let's things that we've personally tested. We went to Dr. Jose Montoya, who's considered to be the number one infectious disease specialist in the world at Stanford University. And sorry, my phone's blown up over there. I should have turned the little ringer off. Uh, but anyway, and, and he basically told us, eh, you know, it's now a chronic, um, CFS is a recognized illness. It used to be, it's all in your brain. It's a recognized illness, according to Stanford. And the only thing they can do is give you antivirals to try to figure out if they can, you know, minimize some of the issue. Well, you know, those cross the blood brain barrier and I don't think so. I'm not gonna just start being in a, a, a rat in a cage into someone's experiment for antivirals. So we were there for a whole week and they wanted to use this as a beta test case for chronic fatigue. I'm not gonna put my daughter as being like, again, a, a, a guinea pig for their uh, Frankenstein experiments. No thank you. Um, anyway, we went to Houston Medical, um, saw one of the number one ENTs in the world, uh, otolaryngologist there who uh, identified a, um, uh, you know, a bacteria in my daughter's sinuses. Uh, and after a four hour surgery, he said it's one of the longest surgeries he's ever done to clear out her sinuses. And she did have an infection. True. I mean, it was caught up, brought on again by uh, autoimmune and the immune function being down and low. Um, they were able to clear out all kinds of stuff. And, you know, she did okay for a little bit. And we've tried a lot of things where like it worked for a week or a few days or something. Uh, and then the chronic fatigue comes right back. That's one of the things about Mike in Canton, Ohio, that's it's not come back unless you just stop doing what he said and then you know ignore it and don't continue to move forward uh, in the path of healing. So Houston Medical, otolaryngologist, number one guy there. Nah, nothing, you know. Very expensive surgery, I might add. Um, countless high-level nutritionists around the world. And I mean countless, and I mean at the highest level. Like I said, I'm a man of means. We we would just go out and we would try anything and everything because I, I love my daughter so much. I I would sacrifice whatever I needed to to get her healthy and get her well. You know, um, seeing her laying in bed, going from surfing champion and gymnast and, and, and salsa instructor to can't get out of bed. I mean, it's horrible. It's gut-wrenching, heartbreaking. Anyway, every supplement imaginable. Guys, and have you tried this? Have you tried that? It's like, guys, please don't ask me, have you tried? Yes, we've tried. We've tried everything, everything we can get our hands on. So supplements are awesome, can help and can work for some people and it depends on the stage that they're at and whatever, but they can also be harmful because the body can't uh, absorb and or sometimes has to react and push away all these supplements we give ourselves. So if you're gonna try supplements, try like one at a time, try just, you know, try one, see if it helps you. And if it doesn't, you know, stop that, move on to something else. Don't just because you go to some nutritionist and we tried a bunch, you know, they give you all these supplements. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do that. And then all of a sudden your body's going, whoa, overload here, guys. Like I can't handle all this. And then you're exacerbating the problem rather than helping the problem. Okay. Very, very important. So introduce them slowly uh, into your uh, body. 
Um, you know, we did strict vegan diet and that does help and I recommend strongly being on a good, strong, healthy diet. But did it heal us? Well, like I said, the Furman thing, it actually helped for quite some time and then the chronic fatigue came back because it's not the only thing in our tool shed and our working tools of how to heal this. It's one element, a strong one, but only an element. Um, we did all the elimination diets, you know, start with eating nothing and introduce one thing at a time into the body to see how the body reacts. So yes, we've done elimination diets. Uh, we've done the protein diets, you know, all of the, pro the latest, greatest and everything in between. Um, we've done sugar eliminations. Uh, we have done leaky gut diets. And, and by the way, there's a lot of value. I mean, leaky gut is a very serious thing and absorption, if you can't absorb the nutrients, it doesn't matter how many supplements you take or what you eat, if your body can't absorb it, it can't absorb it, end, end game, right? So yes, leaky gut, but again, you know, all the bone broths and subscribing to all the, you know, fancy bone broth places, um, you know, organic, grass-fed, free range, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> And you know, those are healthy things to do, but again, it's just a piece of the puzzle. It's not far from everything. Um uh, I, I was gonna talk about the blood work part of this too, which was really interesting. We've taken so many huge blood panel things, and some of them have pointed out some cool stuff. One of them was that my daughter was extremely low in iron, you know? Um, we did, uh, so we did IV iron things. We did IV nutrition, right? Because if you can't, you know, ingest it in the gut, uh, maybe you can, you know, uh, do it intravenously. So we went down that route. Did it help us? No, but at least her iron levels are up, so it's another component. Now, by the way, chronic fatigue is kind of like death by a thousand paper cuts, you know, death by paper cut. It's not one thing, one slice that you bleed, uh, you know, internally or bleed to death. That's not what causes it. It's all these different things that attack the immune system. So you have to address all these different things and in different ways we address this. So please don't think it's a one size fit all or there's some pill we can take that's gonna cure all this stuff. It's the combination of all this. So, you know, blood panel work for days. Um, some of it helped, some of it helped identify certain things. Um, all kinds of autoimmune tests, and I don't even want to go into that. And a lot of kine uh, kinesiology testing, it's, and it's good stuff. Like some of people, you know, all right, you hold the herb and you push your arm down and you do all these weird tests and stuff. There's better kinesiologists, some are better than others, of course, and some of it is a little out there. And, you know, I'm a show me kind of guy, prove it. You know, I want to see if it really works, but I'm also willing to test things I may or may not believe in to see if they do work. So some kinesiology things did help with allergy tests, uh, you know, heavy metal testing. Uh, stool tests we did, urine tests we did, and that list goes on and on. And we, you know, found some things that you know were helpful and some things that weren't. Um, we actually flew all the way to Honolulu for some energy work uh, from one of the number one energy doctors in the world. And that was actually referred to us by a functional medicine doctor who was a very high level functional medicine doctor in Newport Beach, California, who this um, older, you know, Chinese guy d did a lot of energy work, helped this doctor that was re recommended to us. And you know, that one thing alone didn't do anything. Now, maybe that combined with other things would have helped, but we were relying on thinking this one thing. We're always, oh, let's go to that thing. Maybe it's going to help. Oh, maybe it's over there. No, maybe it's over here. Maybe it's up there. Maybe it's down there. You know, you're trying all these different things. And so I'm not dissing it, but I'm saying it's far from the only thing. But I'm going to recommend it in a minute in a different context. Okay. So um, we did ozone treatments, intravenous ozone treatments. Um, we did acupuncture and acupressure. We did niacin sauna treatments. Um, I already talked about the vi vitamin and iron infusions, uh, intravenous fusion. We've seen the number one herbologists around the world, Chinese medicine. So we've done Western medicine, Eastern medicine, and everything in between. Um, now, so the things that have helped us, and I've got a lot of notes here, so bear with me. I'm just going to take some of these things off my, my plate here so I can put some of these things up here. But there are some, some NMT things I want to discuss, and I'm going to uh, talk about more of the healing process. Okay, gee, Ken, that's great. You tried all these things, you know, but some worked, some didn't. Can you please tell us what did work? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Now, I want to do a part two to this because I want to do it with interviews from other people that have also done these similar things that we've done to show you that there is a path to healing. Now, 
a few minutes ago, I was going to say, you know, prove it. Like, how do you know that, you know, what, when you went down to Mike, what helped you? What was a, a, a physical manifestation of something you could prove? I'll give you one example. The last time we were there, which is just about a month ago, um, my daughter, as a result of what happens with, you know, chronic fatigue, she was so broken out, she literally looked like she had chicken pox. I kid you not. She was so, her back, just large, big, ugly, pussy, yucky, nasty things. Within a couple of weeks, of the treatments that we did with Mike, um, she, her complexion was completely clear, okay? Now, this is important because the skin, um, it, 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 as you, everyone should know this, um, whenever you see a part of the body that gets healed, you can say, oh wow, there's a direct result of something that's happening, right? So whether it's your liver or your kidney, your skin is an organ. And if your organ all of a sudden goes from being like chicken pox with pussy, you know, ugly pimples all over to being completely clear, if that organ is receiving healing or restoration or rehabilitation, then other organs in your body must be doing the same thing. It's not just the skin. The skin is a, is a result of or a byproduct of healing that's happening in the body. So this is one of many different things. Now, by the way, too, um, my daughter who needs to stick with this. By the way, this is something you have to do as a regimen. You've got to be faithful with every day. And it's really tough because once you start to feel a little better, what do you want to do? Well, you want your life back and you want to run out and you want to take your kid to the park and you want to go dancing or you want to, you know, go snow skiing. We actually actually happen to live in Flagstaff, Arizona now. Uh, moved from Hawaii. We lost our homes in Hawaii to lava, as a lot of you guys know, last year. And so we went, moved from California to Hawaii, lived there for five years and then moved to um, the Grand Canyon area of Flagstaff, Arizona. So there's snow skiing. So so who wouldn't want to go snow skiing during snow season and, 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 right? But no, you don't do that. You give your body time to heal heal and allow these therapies to take hold and take little baby steps. And the minute you start to feel a little bit of the chronic fatigue coming on, you step back and you just take a break and you, you know, give yourself a little time out. Yeah, not a time out as in a child in a bedroom, but you know, you just stay stop for a minute and then you regroup after you start feeling a little better and you take small steps to see what the body is capable of in order to take larger steps and to then take strides towards um, ultimate and total and complete healing, okay? So as we've discussed all these different things, NMT work. Now, please don't just do these and think, think you're gonna get well. Again, consult your medical practitioner, uh, consult a, a, you know, a neurologist or whomever you wanna go to to get this stuff. I'm just gonna give you some examples of kind of these almost seemingly crazy exercises that you do in order to be able to um, get the brain to start getting the, the nervous system to function correctly. There's one called eyes and distortion where you, you sit there and you look at a spot and you turn your head to the right and you stare at the spot and you slowly bring yourself back to center of the spot and you work your way up from you know one to 25 of these and you do this, you know, you work your way up to a couple times a day, right? Uh, there's uh, OPK where you, you, know, you look at a point, I actually use my finger where you look at a point, you don't recruit the head and neck, you keep straight and you look up like this and you look all the way to the corner to the left like this and then snap your eyes back forward. Don't follow the finger back down. Uh, there's another one called Roji Biv where you go through the color spectrum of the rainbow. So Roji Biv is actually uh, each letter of the rainbow. So, um, or the spectrum of light, I should say, excuse me. Uh, and you hold a flashlight of, of uh, a filter. So you start with red and you, you know, you cross it over your eyes here and you do this starting five times and you work your way up to 10 and then 15, 20 and then 25 times. And then, you know, you'd be very careful about this because this actually could cause issues, neurological issues, instead of helping you. And then you switch colors and you start at five and again, you work your way through this. Please don't do these exercises without consulting this. And wait for me to post this other video with Mike because uh, Mike can actually help us all understand the best path uh, towards healing and towards success. I'm just sharing things that we've done with, does this stuff really help? Is this just snake oil or is this, you know, smoke and mirrors? Like does that, no, no, it really helps. I kid you not. It really helps. I'm going to get to more things here in a minute uh, that have helped us. So I'm just sharing things that have helped us. So you do with this information whatever you want. Um, I didn't realize counseling, right? You think, oh no, you're going to talk about, you know, going to a counselor. Yeah, I am actually. Um, we did some counseling 
And I didn't, you know, my dad left home when I was really young. He left me to be the man of the house. It really sucked. Uh, it, he went out of his way to prove to my mom that we couldn't live without him. So I found myself as a 12 year old sitting on the phone, pay phone, last nickel that we had back then calling somebody was only a nickel or a dime. <laughs> that's how old I am. Uh, and a pay phone, that's how old I am. <laughs> but uh, begging my dad for child support. Sometimes he'd give it to us, sometimes he wouldn't. Uh, and I'm going to share my testimony in, in one of these. I'm not, I might even do that today, but um, I'm going to discuss, share how tough that was, but how we can rely on uh, uh, things that are greater than us uh, to get us through that. But anyway, it left some emotional scars and I didn't realize I had them. And um, and I guess too then that also uh, can trickle down and funnel down progeny, you know, to your, your children. And so uh, through the counseling and all this, and my wife as well going through counseling, we realized that we had some issues that we, sh we needed to clear up uh, because our canopy and us covering our children or those beneath us or even family and friends around us, right? What we had rubs off onto them. And I didn't realize that. So that's why Mike wanted us to go through the program first in order to be able to heal her or help her towards a path towards healing. So anyway, uh, so yeah, counseling was very, very helpful. Um, and by the way, too, one more thing is that these traumatic experiences that we've had in our life, they store in your cells. That's right. Your body has cellular structure that stores memory of all of these incidences. So you really want to unearth this stuff and get it out and get rid of it so you can deal with it rather than just pushing it down, thinking you've dealt with it and moving on. No, they resurface in different ways and they could manifest themselves all the way to chronic fatigue. Okay, this is very important. Um, healing touch therapy. Now, as we said, we went to a, you know, a, a touch therapist guy, um, a well-known guy. Well, actually that's is a good part of the healing process of healing touch therapy. And it's amazing, and I don't have time to go into it, but I will try to do this in part two. Uh, we have dealt with 5G, uh, you know, a nervous system disruption, or not yet 5G, but 3 and 4G, uh, and Wi-Fi blockers, and internet block, you know, blockers, uh, cell blockers, and so forth. So we have different things. So you can actually go online right now and you'll blow your mind because there's a huge market in this. And there's some that are just trying to scare tactic, sell you stuff. But um, you know, you can get blockers for those that like to put their laptop in their lap. That's why they call it a laptop. Is a Wi-Fi blocker that goes underneath it because they found recently that um, they measurably that guys that young guys that you know put their laptop around their gonads, uh, they have a decreased uh, function for fertility and they lose fertility and it's pretty crazy that this stuff is doing this to all of us, right? Um, God forbid what it's doing to women as well. So anyway, Wi-Fi blockers for laptops, Wi-Fi blockers for your cell phone. They're, they're, we'll, I'll try and post some, just look them up on your own. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Do this, do your own research on this. But you know, like my friend that died from cell phone use, she was using um, headsets, but she wasn't using the kind that had um, air vacuum in it, which uh, it's, uh, separates the, the uh, actual signal from the phone to your brain, to your, uh, to your earphones. So, uh, because it goes through air and then it you know regroups and uh, amplifies the sound up in headphones so that's awesome uh, that would be a great start um, there's they're even selling underwear I kid you not under armor underwear that are cell phone blockers because you put your phone you know in your pocket your back pocket front pocket whatever um, it's a cell blocker for that we have um, cell blockers for you can plug into the wall now uh, this was an interesting experiment one of the guys at Mike's office that is recovered or in the process of recovering like 90% recovered who is, um, uh, I don't know if he's a physicist or what, but he actually works in a very technical uh, office, you know, with a lot of physics going on. And a lot, of, a lot of times he said the office is super aggro and everything's really uptight. And, uh, and he took a Wi-Fi blocker and he says there's Wi-Fi everywhere. I mean, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a technical place. And he just quietly plugged it into the wall and he actually physically noticed that people started to calm down they were less aggressive. They were less, you know, fight or flight, right? And it was just like miraculous. Plug this thing in the wall, and all of a sudden he started to relax. Unbelievable. Everyone started to relax. Unbelievable. So Wi-Fi blockers you can put in the wall. Wi-Fi cell blockers you can put and wear. Um, I actually wear one. I have one for my neck and one for my wrist um, that actually blocks Wi-Fi signal as well. Now, if you think this is baloney, I want you to see something. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put this video out here, and it has to do with, um, a mesh 
that you can put around your router and m how it's measured, right? So I'm gonna put this video on here and I want you to watch this video. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna put the URL up in the description, but I want you to watch this video on how this has been measured and proven that this is not just some, whoa, waves, dude, whoa, the energy, and you know, it's coming at you, bro. We gotta like figure this out. And uh, Atlantis is real and it started there. No, guys, this is like legit, quantifiable, verifiable things that we have seen and verifiable ways uh, to countermand that. So Wi-Fi blockers. Um, now, a really sad component of this, I was reading an article recently uh, about a school that uh, had put up a cell tower next to the, an elementary school and I think nine children got cancer relatively quickly, within a year after this. And it was so uh, extreme and so outrageous that they, full on determined they were certain that it was the, the cell tower and they removed the tower and these kids are you know stuck with their cancer dealing with cancer. So if you think it's, you know, oh gee, this is, you know, you're blowing this out of proportion. No, I'm not actually. And we're seeing more and more and more of this. So I want to discuss diet and get back to, um, you know, Dr. Gundry. So we've been on this um, uh, lectin diet for a while and I personally have noticed a dramatic reduction in inflammation in my body from doing this diet. And you have to be consistent with it. And sometimes it's hard. It's like, you know, you want to go off the wagon. I love a piece of pizza or I love a good steak or I love a in and out cheeseburger or something, you know. So you can actually take lectin blockers. You don't do this all the time, right? But you can take a lectin blocker if you're going to be naughty and have, you know, some ice cream or something or whatever. It's not like, oh, you're sentenced to, you know, never enjoying yourself. But make good quality healthy choices. You know, be, you know, think about this stuff, guys. Use your brains and your mind. You know, use your intellect on this stuff and 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 also be um you use some moderation in this because if you are all in and then you get so frustrated because you're tired of eating a certain way that you just, again, throw the baby out with the bathwater, or throw your arms up in the air and abandon that, that's not good either. So we need to have a balance on how we do this. Um, I'm going to get to essential oils. Okay. Now, I used to think essential oils were a joke. I'm sorry. I did. Just me, right? Because I, I am skeptical about almost everything and most everything. And so I actually... Um, I'm not going to suggest you go out and go with any specific company, but way back when this first started, my daughter became uh, a member of um, Young Living. And I know there's doTERRA and these other essential oil companies and some really good ones. And those are multi-level companies. Now, you don't need to go to a multi-level company. I just happen to like Young Living because their products are excellent and they're really concentrated. They're really powerful. But I'm going to get back to how they've helped. So sometimes I'll have like a really stressed out day and I've got 9,000 things I want to get done and I'll put you know stress relief and I'll just rub it on me real quick and I won't even think twice about it or put some lavender or something or whatever and then I'll get back to business and I'll notice wow I feel a lot more calm I feel a lot more relaxed you know it's really cool and then I realized what did I do differently oh yeah I use some essential oils oh my gosh this stuff must really work and it wasn't one time I've tried it or two times I've tried this multiple multiple times and I go wow this stuff really works. It helps with your immune system. There's all kinds of different oils for different things. So they do work. So as, as people make fun of them, make fun of whatever you want, folks. But again, this is personal experience of things we've tried that I know for a fact for me and for my household, my family, they work. Um, the, slowing down the mind. I'm one of these guys that just, you know, I'm on, I'm on 11 all the time, right? I have to constantly remind myself to even speak more slowly and to react more slowly, to underreact to things. Underreact to things. That's so hard for me. I go, ah, let's happen, let's kill it, you know. And I just gotta go, yeah, you know, okay, we'll we'll take care of it. And constantly remind yourself to slow down. We live in a fast-paced world. Daddy, are we in a hurry? No, I'm not in a hurry. I want to live a long, healthy life, and I hope I can share singing information and health information for all of you out there to also enjoy a long, healthy, vibrant life. Um, so not rushing, not getting things done, uh, or, or trying to get too many things done at once. Um, and easy, easy, state, easy, even uh, state balance or homeostasis. I want my body to be in, a, in or working towards a constant state of homeostasis or balance uh, for my body, my spirit, my soul, uh, everything that goes along with that. Um, so yes, we're creating new neural pathways in the body. Okay, and so what some of this NMT work does is it's deep tissue fascia ripping off the fascia, the skin up to the bone. I mean the muscles, and 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 allowing the body 
to create new neural pathways and to get rid of the old th ways that we have done things that have hurt us to create new neural pathways so that we can get on with the body healing itself rather than relying on some Western medical drug that is gonna be a Band-Aid at best and not be on our path to great healing. So with that said, guys, I hope this was helpful. I know it's sort of like, you know, getting a Robert Kiyosaki uh, video. Well, you told me, you know, um, you know uh, there's a path to wealth, but you didn't really tell me exactly how to make money. Actually, I did. I did, but everyone's path is different. And I'm gonna do a part two of this with interviews and very specific things that are gonna help you. And hopefully maybe even start up some kind of um, forum or some kind of uh, way that I can get Mike involved in this where we can actually do this on a broader scale and in recruit and enlist other people that want to become um, yeah, NMTs that will follow his protocol exactly because if you don't do it I don't believe it would work because like I said not all MT therapy is created equal and Mike has found the true path of success for us and for our family okay thank you for joining me you guys God bless all of you and until next time peace out Hey guys, if you like what you heard, please like and subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button. That will actually take you to another page where you want to click on the bell icon and it opens up a menu and the menu has notifications on it where there's a little box you can check where it says send me all notifications for this channel. Check the box and then click the save button and you'll get notifications from me every time I have a cool video come out. Okay, thanks guys. Peace out.